Welcome to the Invest for More Real Estate Podcast. My name is Mark Ferguson, and I am your host. I'm a house flipper. I flip 10 to 15 houses a year. I own 13 rental properties with a goal to buy 100 by 2023. I'm also a real estate agent. I've been licensed since 01. I run a team of nine. We sell close to 200 houses a year. So on this show, we like to interview house flippers, landlords, and the best real estate agents in the business. So stay tuned for some great shows. If you want more information on my rentals, on the numbers, how I buy properties, check out investformore.com. Hey everyone, Mark Ferguson here. Welcome to another episode of the Invest for More Real Estate Podcast. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about my 2015, going through some of my goals I had for the year, if I accomplished them or not, what I can do better, what I can do worse, and then also talking about my new goals for 2016, what I have in plan for the year, what I want to accomplish, what I hope to accomplish, and just go through exactly what I've done and exactly what I want to do for the upcoming year. Now, goals are so important, especially for anything business-wise, success. So many people kind of float through life. They don't have goals. They don't really know what they want. And they wonder why they don't ever get what they want, but they never, they don't even know what they want in the first place. So, I mean, that's a really the first thing you have to do if you want to be successful is de- define what success is to you. And that doesn't mean being comfortable or, you know, being happy. You know, those are things that would be great. But you're not defining anything. Happiness, comfort levels, it's all different to every single person out there. So you have to be as specific as possible when you're defining what you want out of your life, what goals you want, what you want to accomplish. I talk to a lot of people, you know, my coaching programs, through comments, through emails, and a lot of people have this vague idea that they want success, but they don't know what that success is. So that's, I mean, that's the first step in being successful is knowing exactly what you want. You know, if you want to get started in real estate and be successful in real estate, you can't just say, Oh, you know, I want to be successful at real estate. That can mean a thousand different things to thousand different people. Narrow it down. Do you want to buy rental properties? Do you want to flip houses? Do you want to be a real estate agent? Once you figure that out, you know, how many houses do you want to buy as rentals? How many houses do you want to flip? How many houses do you need to sell as a real estate agent? You need to be specific on what you're doing, what you're striving for, as long as it does it give you a great idea in your head of what you want to do, where you want to go, but you can then work backwards from those numbers to figure out what you have to do to get there. If you just say, I want to be successful in real estate, you really you have nowhere to go. There's no way you can build a plan around that. But if you say, I want to buy five fix and flips and sell those houses as well in 2016, you know exactly what you're trying to do, exactly where you're trying to go. Then you can say, okay, so that means I need to buy about one every two months. Maybe I can skip one month. I need to get them repaired in you know, such and such time. I need this much money for down payments, for repairs. I need to find this financing. It gives you a way to build a plan, start working backwards so you can find success. As far as the type of goals I make, I make very aggressive, very challenging goals. I think people make the mistake of making goals that are easy to achieve. They know they can achieve. So, for example, when I first started buying rental properties, I bought one my first year at the end of the year. I bought three more the next year. And that's when I really started to get serious about self-improvement, about setting goals, about really you know, being as successful as I possibly could be. And I thought to myself, okay, I bought three this year, so I could buy 30 in 10 years. That seems like a reasonable goal. I bought three this year, three more for the next 10 years. Hey, I'll be in a good position, have lots of cash flow coming in, be financially, you know, stable, awesome goal. I then went on to, you know, read many, many books on self-improvement, took Jack Canfield coaching, explored and learned as much as I could about success. And I figured out my goal to buy 30 rentals. It was easy. I mean, (laughs) I'd already bought three. I already knew I could do that. You know, the status quo going, keep going along at the same pace I was, and I could accomplish that goal. So it was not challenging me at all. And I realized if I wanted to get ahead in life, I really wanted to keep building and improving. I had to make a more aggressive goal. So that's where I came up with my plan to purchase 100 rental properties, basically in the next 10 years, by 2023. And um, at that time, it was 2013 when I made that goal. And that goal really 
helped me improve the way I looked at things, helped me buy properties faster, it was really cool to write about on the blog. And it just, you know, it set in motion so many events that helped me do more faster because I made an aggressive goal. I had to figure out, you know, new ways to buy properties, new ways to get more money. Just so many different things came from that goal that improved my business. And it was really good to writing out an entire article for that goal. Because for one thing, it was published out there for everybody to see. So I had to be held accountable for it. You know, I couldn't just make this goal, keep it a secret to myself. And then if I didn't accomplish it or if I didn't work at it, no big deal because nobody ever knew about it. It was something that's out there. The public knew about it. You know, my readers know about it. And people could see my progress and how I was doing. Also, what I was doing to improve on things. So that was an awesome way to be held accountable, to make sure I was working towards that goal and doing everything I could to accomplish it. So if you're setting goals, one thing I suggest is try to share it with somebody, whether it's your spouse, you know, your family, friends, coworkers, tell them what you're trying to do. Usually they'll be excited. They'll encourage you. They'll help you reach it. And if nothing else, someone else knows about it. And if they discourage you and say you can't do it, then, hey, that just adds even more motivation to prove them wrong and do it anyway. So try and share your goals. I know it's tough for some people. They're very personal. You know, it's kind of scary to put yourself out there and have other people criticize or judge what you want to do in life. But it'll help you get there faster, and um, it really is worth it. So writing about it was awesome because I was accountable. Plus, I had a very precise plan in place of exactly what I wanted to do that I could always look back very easily and see what it was. So always write, write down your goals too, whether it's in a notebook, whether it's online in a blog, an article, or on your computer, write down your goals. Make sure you know what they are. It's so easy to forget about them. If I don't write things down, I forget about it very quickly. And there's some study or some statistic where if you come up with an idea, a brand new idea, and you don't write it down, it takes about 15 or 30 seconds to forget about it. So <laughs> I try to write everything down because with my brain, it's usually about 10 seconds and I forget about what I'm thinking about. So make sure you write stuff down, especially goals. So you remember what they are. Remember what dates you want to accomplish them by. You remember the details and why you're excited about them too. That's very important. So by, by making this goal, by writing it down, by sharing it with people, really pushed me and motivated me to accomplish it, to do more and make things happen faster. So last year I bought five rental properties, which is puts me behind on my pace to buy a hundred. So if you read my article, you know, my plan to purchase 100 rental properties, I do a year by year breakdown of how many houses I want to buy each year to reach that goal. So I start out with, I think it was five or six the first year, then seven or eight the second year, and then slowly bump that up. Cause I assume in the later years, I'll be making more money, have more cash flow coming in. I can buy more properties. So I'm a little behind on where I'm supposed to be, but I'm still, I have 16 rentals now. And if I think back to my original goal, which was to buy 30 properties in 10 years, I'm already more than halfway past that goal. And I'm only in the second, starting the third year of that plan to purchase 100. So by making that bigger goal, by forcing myself to be challenged, I'm way ahead of where I would have been if I would have had a smaller goal that was easy to achieve. So please don't be afraid to make big goals. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. I know I hear from people who say, well, what if you fail? What if you don't reach that goal? Then it makes you feel bad about yourself and you get discouraged and it's worse off than if you would have accomplished that goal. And I don't believe that at all. If you don't reach a goal, it's not a failure. It's a goal is simply a tool to be used to help you accomplish more. So say I don't reach my goal to buy 100 houses. Maybe I buy 80 or maybe if I only buy 60. Am I going to feel bad about myself? No, I would have doubled what I thought I could buy in the beginning if I only had my 30 property goal. I did twice as good by having that big goal than having the small goal. Why would I be mad or disappointed that I bought twice as many houses because of that goal, even though I didn't reach it. And that's the way you have to look at goals. It's not failure or success. It's how much did it help you 
do more than you thought you could do in the beginning. I mean, I almost think it's a bad thing if you accomplish all your goals because that means you didn't make aggressive enough goals. They're too easy. They didn't push yourself. They didn't challenge you. So there's a many books on this, many different opinions. But my thoughts are if you can make your goals so that you almost reach them, almost get there, but don't quite do as much as you hope to do, that's perfect. Because then you're working hard all year long, trying to accomplish those goals all year long. Um, don't quite get there. So you're pushing to the end of the year to reach them. And they're close enough that, you know, you think you can reach them, or at least, you, you know, you have a chance, even if it's a, an outside shot, but you've got a chance of getting there. So you keep working hard to get to those goals. If you reach your goals in October, November, a lot of people say, oh, I reached my goals. I, I'm successful. I did everything I wanted to. I can take these last two months off. And if you take those two months off, it usually puts you in a bad spot for the next year. You know, you lose a lot of the momentum you gained from the previous year. So don't be afraid to make big, aggressive goals. Don't be afraid not to hit those big, aggressive goals, because in the long run, you're better off than having not reached those goals. And make sure you write down those goals. Make sure you tell people about them. Get encouragement, get motivation, and have accountability for what those goals are. Okay, so that's probably enough talk about goals. I have a lot of articles, a lot of different resources for goals on my website if you want to learn more. So what did I do in 2015 and what were my original goals? First thing I'm going to talk about are my rental properties. So I did a write-up on this same subject uh, for 2015. My goals for 2016, you can find on the blog. I also did the same thing for 2014, 2015. And I did another one for kind of the end of 2013, if you want to see those articles. But for rental properties, I wanted to buy seven in 2016. Or sorry, 2015. That was my goal at the beginning of 2015 was to buy seven rentals. Right now, I have bought five so far. So that's fewer than I was hoping to get. But there are some definite positives in um, buying those five rentals. For one thing, that's more than I've ever bought in any other year. So, um, you know, buying five rentals in one year, I think that's a pretty good accomplishment. I'm pretty happy about that. But also, one of those properties was a duplex. So I bought my first duplex in 2015, um, which is two units. So technically, if you want to look at it as a units compared to rental properties, I bought six units in 2015. And then another thing is I have 10 flips in my inventory right now that I'm working on. Two of those flips could become rental properties. I haven't decided for sure yet. So one of them I actually bought during the summer. I purchased it for about $100,000. When I bought it, it was an occupied REO. So I bought it through HubZoo as an auction. It was occupied. I talked to the people who are living there. They said they're the previous owners. They'd like to stay as, if possible, rent the house back. So I thought to myself, okay, cool. I can buy this flip, possibly rent it back to the current occupants. I've got some other flips going, other repair jobs I'm working on, so I don't have to get it finished right away. I don't have the resources to finish it right away. I can rent it to them, hold it in my inventory. Maybe at the end of the year, I will um, get them out, sell it next year, and make some money on it. So I talked to the tenants. We ended up renting it for $1,100 a month. I haven't done any work to it. haven't had to really spend any money at all. So they've been renting it. It's actually a two-unit property. There's a um, The family lives upstairs, and their son and his family lives downstairs. And we did a six-month lease. So I figured at the end of that six-month lease, I'd reevaluate things, figure out a plan from there. That came up uh, in November, and I decided, okay, I'm going to raise the rents if they move out. Fine, I'll get the house fixed up a little bit, sell it as a flip. And if they agree to the rent increase, then I'll do another six-month lease. And I'll either try and sell it as a rental property with tenants in place. Or I might just keep it as a rental. So we decided to raise the rents to $1,300 a month. And they agreed. So we have them on new six-month lease terms. And I'm currently deciding if I want to keep that property as a rental which would add two more units to my rental properties and put me at um, 
you know, six total properties bought in 2015, or if you're looking at units, that make it eight total units bought in 2015. Or I might sell it as an occupied rental, long-term lease in place, $1,300 a month. If I did that, I'm thinking I could probably get oh, probably close to 150, maybe 140,000 for it without doing too much work at all. Pretty decent profit. So I'm trying to decide where I want to go with that. My my hesitation on keeping it as a rental is it's a little outside of the area where I normally buy rentals, neighborhood with lower average prices, where if prices go down, if we see a decline in the economy, those neighborhoods usually see the biggest incre- decrease in prices. So we'll see. We'll see what I decide on that one. The other issue with that I'll touch on real quickly is we've had a couple leases ending in or November, December, around this time of year. And it is noticeably harder to rent properties over the winter than it is over the summer, spring. So what we have been doing is putting a couple six month leases in place just so when it comes time to renew their leases in case the tenants want to leave, we're renting them in the summer, not in the winter because it is really obvious that it's much easier to rent properties um, in the spring, summer than it is in the winter right now. All right. So the other property I bought in um, 2015 as a flip is another up down duplex. It could be two units that I'm planning on flipping. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, man, this would be a pretty good rental property too. I bought it for 125,000. It probably needs 15, maybe 20,000 in work. And there'll be a four bedroom, two bath when I'm done. Could be two bedroom, one bath on each level. So, I mean, really the rents could range from probably 14, 1500 as a single family up to, you know, 16, 1700 as a two unit property. So I'll see kind of what I want to do on that. We'll have to look at that closely. So I may flip that. I may keep that as a rental too. If I did keep it, then I'd have my seven properties and I'd actually have 10 units I bought in 2015. So we'll see what happens with the rental properties. I'd say it's a good year. Uh, My goal for 2016 is to buy 10 more rentals. So again, I said I like to be aggressive. I bought five this year at a minimum, but possibly more depending on what I decide to do. So 10, I think I can accomplish in 2016. One thing I'm doing to work on that to make it happen is I'm thinking about refinancing eight of my current properties with a national lender. There are some lenders out there now who'll do fixed rate mortgages, 30 years, rates six to seven percent, so a little higher rates, but doesn't matter how many mortgages you have, doesn't matter your credit, um, debt to income ratio, they're looking at the property. So I've been running into some problems with my local portfolio lender. I hit $2.5 million in loans with them and they're starting to back off a little bit on how much they want to lend to me. So if I can refinance any of my properties, they'll put me well below that figure, probably be easier to get more loans with that portfolio lender. And I can also take out quite a bit of cash if I do that refinance and still cash flow on those properties. So that would make it easier to buy more properties in 2016, have that more cash available. The biggest issue I think I'm going to have is not paying for these properties. It's going to be finding the properties because in Colorado, our market is still going crazy. Very hard to find cash flow in properties that I have explored different markets. I may, boy, it's going to be tough, but I've really been thinking about investing in a different market, you know, finding an agent, contractors, great lender down maybe in Florida, you know, all types of different areas I've been looking. So we'll see how that goes. All right. <laughs> For my flipping, in 2015, I ended up doing nine flips. And my original goal was to do 10. So, I mean, I wasn't too far off, but I could have done a lot more. My plan was kind of to really reduce the amount of flips I did in 2015, which I did do, but it wasn't because I was, you know, doing a lower volume. It's because it took so long to fix up the properties I have. So I hired a project manager, full-time employee in 2015 to try and speed up my flipping process. And it has not gone as well as I hoped. Things are still going very, very slow. So in 2016, make a lot of changes and do a lot of different things to really speed up the time it takes to rehab my property. That's just a huge roadblock that's really holding me back. 
So that's one of the main thing I'm going to focus on in all of my business for 2016 is speeding up the rehab process. So with my 10 flips I have now, I've got two under contract set to close next year, 2016. My new goal is to flip 20 houses in 2016. So I know that's a huge goal. That's a really big goal. If I happen to keep those two properties as rentals, that'll make an even tougher goal. But I think I can accomplish that if I really focus on the rehab process, really focus on getting that timeline reduced and just really hammering out a system. Because if I can fix that, if I can make my repair process faster, I can sell properties quicker. I can buy more properties. I can just do so much more. Because I know there's a couple properties in the last month that I haven't gone after, that I haven't tried to buy, that could have been flips because I've got so much going on. I just not in a position to buy more flips at this moment. So we'll see what 2016 holds in store. But if I can flip that many properties, that will give me even more money to buy rentals. And that will also help in purchasing more rentals, speeding up that process. All right. So for my real estate team, my goal was to add a couple agents and sell 200 houses in 2015. I did add two agents to our team. Well, that was nice. Um, really great people. One is very new, just started. The other one's been going about six months, and he is selling quite a few houses, has three under contract, is have, having quite a few closings. He got off to a little bit of a slow start, but has been doing awesome lately. But that's been great. Another new agent that we hired in 2014 has just been doing awesome. Uh, he made over $100,000 in his first year in the business. Just had an amazing year. And um, he's been just great. So he's going blazes. So the team has been doing really well. We have 10 people on the team now, seven licensed agents, if you include myself. You know, a couple of those are assistants who don't do a lot of selling, but they're still licensed. But we only sold 127 houses in 2015. So it's way below my goal of 200. But there's a lot of reasons that happened. The biggest thing is back in 2012, even uh, 2011, we're selling close to 200 houses a year because of my HUD listing contract. I mean, we sold, I think, 170, 150 just HUD homes one year. So that was a huge part of our business was the HUD homes, REO properties. Our market is really hot. Like I've said over and over again in Colorado, there are almost no foreclosures here which means there are almost no HUD homes, no REOs coming up for sale. So the percentage of houses sold by me versus the team, I am selling much less now, and my team is selling much more, which is how I want it to be. I want to be able to focus on the blog, on my investments, and let the team really do most of the house selling. And that, So even though that number is much lower than our 200 house goal, our prices have been going up, so the average house sale is way up. We made uh, really good money because the house values were up, um, because the team was selling more than I was selling. So it really wasn't a bad year as far as the team goes, even though it might look that way on the surface. For 2016, my goal, again, sell 200 houses. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to keep making that goal until I reach it. That's, that's my um, my thoughts. So there's a few things we're going to do um, to get there. Most of them are already in place. We have our, our website, fergusongreeley.com, which is a local website for Colorado. We've really been working on writing some articles, trying to build that up. So hopefully that will create some more leads. In fact, it already has. Um, we're doing a lot of work on Facebook. So really focusing on Facebook because of the cost of advertising and the ease of use of Facebook. Facebook's been a great tool for our team. And then we always do weekly trainings, try and give our agents as much support as possible. We really focus on training, support, and, and giving them the tools to succeed. So I think we can hit that 200, even if I don't sell a bunch of HUD homes myself, which I don't see happening because of our market. But I think the rest of our team can really pick it up and do awesome on their side. All right. Flips, rentals, the blog is another thing I want to talk about. So I had some goals for Invest for More for 2015. Didn't reach them all. Did reach some. I wanted to get to 300,000 views a month by the end of 
2015. And it's funny because in July, I almost got there, but then traffic actually went down a little bit the last half of the year. Hard to say why in the internet world, but um, decreased some, but we're almost at 300,000. I don't think we'll quite get it, but still really close, really happy with the way things are going. I wanted to implement a new real estate agent training program, which I did do. It's been a lot of fun. I really like you know talking to agents on the coaching calls. Really like hearing the success stories and seeing how I can help them become successful. I uh, started a podcast, so that wasn't even one of my goals. But <laughs> we ended up starting a podcast, as you know, as you can hear right now. It's been a lot of fun. I think I've got a, it's hard to measure what a podcast does for your website or blog. But I get so many people who say, you know, I hear you on the podcast. I love listening to the podcast. So I know people like it, and I can see from the numbers it's getting quite a few downloads. So it's been it's been fun talking to other investors as well. So even every time I interview someone else, I usually learn something myself. So even if nobody listened to my podcast and nobody cared, I'm still learning. So it's been a success. Start a new forum. So the forum is a little trickier to get started. So many people are using Facebook now and social media to keep in touch. That forums I think are kind of losing a little bit of their luster. But um, forum's still been a great source for people to talk to me, get in touch with me. And then um, also we have our Facebook page, a Facebook group I started. So all types of different things we've been working on. I still have uh, my Complete Blueprint program, which has been doing really well. Um, I think that's one of the best investing programs out there if you're looking to get into rental properties or flipping. It comes with coaching calls from me as well, just Awesome product. People really love that one. And then I also started a new um, coaching program, kind of higher level, more personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. It's been going pretty well. That's brand new. Um, you won't find it on the website. If you're interested at all, you can always send me an email, mark at investformore.com. I can tell you a little bit more about that one. So the blog's been going great for 2016. I want to try to get to 500,000 views a month. I don't know. It's, it's hard to set goals for a blog because it's not just about traffic numbers, it's about um, making sure you have good content, making sure you're connecting with people, not just high volume. But I think 500,000 would be a good number. Uh, I am also working on a new book. So I've got five ebooks I've published. I am trying to make just an awesome, out of this world rental property investing book. Just kind of putting everything I know into it. And it's not just going to be an ebook, it's going to be a real book. On Amazon, you know, something you can buy, have delivered to your house. So I'm working on that. That should be available the first part of the year at some point, I'm hoping. And then I'm also working on a book with Jay Scott. So if you know Jay Scott from uh, 123flip.com or Bigger Pockets, he's on there a lot. He's had a couple best selling real estate books. And um, we are working on a collaboration right now, a new book we're going to write together, which should be out at the end of the year, kind of towards um, Thanksgiving, maybe a little sooner than that, that uh, should be really awesome. So that's going to be a ton of fun. All right. So I'm sure I'll think of some more things to do in the blog next year. I always <laughs> manage to, but I really, you know, I, I try to focus on writing great articles, putting out good content and helping people as much as I can. And so far that's worked out pretty well. I've got over 400 articles now that I've written, so um, keep adding to that. All right, finally, some personal goals. You know, I don't talk a lot about what I'm doing personally as far as income or things like that, but I do talk about some of my personal goals, like buying the Lamborghini in 2014 was a goal I'd made at the start of the year. Really awesome seeing that come to fruition and buying that car. I still have it. I still love that car. I bought it for 126000 was it May of 2014? And I think right now it's hard to value a car like that, but it's probably worth close to 200,000 right now, just because the car market has gone nuts, especially for anything Lamborghini, Ferrari, really been crazy. So I didn't buy any new cars in 2015. Uh, I didn't really plan to buy any new ones either. It's more about real estate than the personal side, but I do have some new goals I'm going to make for 2016. You know, try and put those out there, hold myself accountable. One of them, I really want to buy a 1980s Aston Martin V8. It's been a favorite car of mine since I was a kid. 
I know it's not the most popular car. Most people might even have not have a clue what they look like, but um, super cool car to me. Very rare. They only made about 200 a year or less. So that's one of my goals is to buy one of those in 2016. So we'll see if I can get that done. And then some just other funny, cool goals I had that I don't really have a time frame yet, but at some point in my life, I'd love to restore an old plantation, mansion type house. You know, I've always loved old houses, and I think it'd be cool to restore an old house. It's kind of dilapidated, but has some history behind it. You know, needs someone to come save it. And at some point, I will have a car dealership in my life. We'll see uh, when that'll happen. But I figured the best way to buy a lot of exotic cars and experience a lot of cars is to have a dealership, so you can buy and sell them and really experience a lot of different automobiles. I know the easy part will be buying them. The hard part will be selling them because I have a hard time selling <laughs> my cars. I love them too much. All right, so that's what I've got so far for 2016. It should be an awesome year. 2015 was a really good year. A lot of fun. A lot of successes. Some things didn't happen quite like I wanted, but still a lot of fun. And um, I just remember to keep pushing, keep improving myself, have fun with life. If everything was easy, it wouldn't be nearly as fun, that's for sure. I love uh, Jim Rohn's quote, don't wish life were easier, wish you were better. So if you come up to struggles, challenges, and keep wondering why you know things happen so bad to you, why everything keeps falling apart, remember, you can change things. You have the power to do things differently. You have the power to rise above all that junk and, and negativity. So you can become better at what you do, better businessman, better person, you know, life becomes much more fun. So don't wish life were easier, wish you were better and uh, could deal with things better. That's my advice for this podcast. All right. Thanks a lot for listening. Really fun show. We'll have a lot of new stuff going on in 2016. More guests, more solo shows for me. And yeah, as always, leave me feedback. Love to have any reviews you have on iTunes. That helps me out. And have a great new year.